And today we're going to be talking about my lifted Miata buddy, <laughs> as in, yeah, buddy. We're, <laughs> Amy, we're stoked, stoked to be talking to you today. Uh, I'm sorry, I know you I know, interrupted I, you, but. No, that's perfect. I, so we, we've known uh, of Amy for a long time through Rebel Rally and um, some, of the other, some of your other exploits. One of the reasons we're excited to talk to you today is because um, you approach things from an unconventional way. I do, way. I do, I mean, it's so the best way. Yeah, so you, you have, um, you have won the Rebel Rally twice? I have, so I won once in the four x four category and that was yep. in a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, yep. right? I mean, like that's the perfect car for off-road off -road driving and rallying. Yep. And then uh, we won it again in the crossover category in a Rolls-Royce Cullinan. Which you might not expect, that's awesome. <laughs> I mean, that must have been an awesome opportunity. And we did it on snow tires. Awesome, yeah. that, cool. Uh, what, what do we have in front of us here? This is Buddy, he is a 2001 Mazda Miata stock yeah. motor, bigger radiator, because yep. Mazda's stock radiators are pretty tiny and doinky. Yep. And so uh, I have a bigger radiator. He's got a four inch lift with the Paco Motorsports uh, Rallycross uh, Coney shocks and suspension on him. So that gives him the four inch lift. 27 inch general tire, uh, general tire grabbers. Right, That's general huge. tire grabbers, right. That's huge, huge for a Miata. For that is absolutely. absolutely. That I is have a Mazda Speed at unreasonable. home. And those tires are 23 inches. So yeah. these are 27 inches. It does rub a little bit in the back. Like you can see where like the tires. <laughs> I've totally. seen you out there at the grinder though. If oh, it gets too it. bad, just hack it, I hack a to, piece out of it. I need to hack a little bit more on that. Yeah. Um, now it's my turn to interrupt. No. Uh, <laughs> so one of the, uh, you guys know, if you know Overland Bound, um, we have a saying, it doesn't matter what you drive. Uh, it does matter where you drive it. You have to be safe. You have to work within the capabilities of your vehicle, but don't let the type of vehicle be right. a block to getting out right. there and doing what you want to do. Absolutely. I mean, the thing that's great about Miatas um, and lifted Miatas in particular is that they are very simple. There's not really a lot of computer stuff that's going to go wrong. Mm -hmm. um, it's rear wheel drive. So you don't have the, uh, you don't have any of the benefits of all wheel drive. Like if you lifted a Subaru, um, which right. are also great to Safari because you do have that all wheel drive system. This is rear wheel drive. I actually race rear wheel drive out in the desert. So I'm used to it. It's what I enjoy. I love the challenge. You of use it as a steering wheel, being right? Being able to, yeah, yeah, use it as a steering wheel. And like, you have to keep up your momentum or yeah. you're never going to make it. And I personally like that. Um, but it's also lightweight. So a lot of the times with vehicles that you would net, you would need four wheel drive for, like you don't need them. That's because it only weighs two thousand pounds. Right. It's a, it goes in the sort of in the rally car category. Yeah, it's capable. exactly. I rear re geared the differential, so this uh -huh. has a limited slip in the rear. Some Miatas came with an open diff, mm -hmm. um, which would probably be pretty terrible uh, because then that's just going to shoot the torque to the wheel that's up in the air, and like that doesn't yeah. do you any good. Yeah. So having a limited slip does help. It's not as good as a locker, obviously, but it will help. Um, maintain that track, maintain that um, power going to the wheel that actually has traction. But by putting in um, 538s into the rear, which I mean, that's a lot, right? Like Jeeps yeah. are at like what, 110s? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what are you nuts? Um, but it brings the torque back to kind of factory feeling with the larger tires. Right. So before I put it in, it was, he was like really slow off the line and just like to get him moving was a big chore. Right. How did you, um, so you, we were talking before um, we started talking on the, on the camera thing. And um, <laughs> clearly this is a, <laughs> clearly this is camera a, thing. Uh, a, it's a passion. Um, you love working on Buddy. Um, how'd you discover that? When did you, when were you like, hey, I love, I just love this. I want to do it. Oh, dude, there's, it, it's such a, uh, let me give you the, the Cliff Notes version of this. So yeah. when I was growing up, my dad used to race air-cooled Volkswagens. Um, and so he raced in class 1600, which is a stock Volkswagen motor. I mean, it's, you know, it's ripped up to like 90 horsepower right. um, on a tube chassis. And so I kind of grew up going out to the desert and going racing and all that kind of stuff. And then a um, couple, like maybe 10 years ago, I was like, I want to try racing. Okay, <laughs> so we had a, um, a class five unlimited bug that was unlimited in terms of the uh, in terms of the motor, but the suspension was set up like a play car. 
but it was what I had, right? So yep. I raced it because why not? So run what you brung. Run what you brung. Yep. And like I did okay, and then um, I ended up uh, saving up some money and I bought my own race car, which is a again a sixteen hundred car. I don't remember where I first saw a lifted Miata, but when I saw it, I was like. <laughs> I have to have that, <laughs> you know, because like I, I, I love Jeeps and I love off-roading, but my yeah. other car is a Mazda Speed Miata. I, this is Buddy is my fourth or fifth Miata. Like I am into got the it. brand, okay, right? Okay, got it. Yep. We should um, take him out here. There's some fun yeah. trails at Hollister. Yeah, let's take it on the trail and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, some right. of the racing gear on the inside and other components. All right. All right. Sounds good. Did you bring a head and neck restraint? Yes. Corner? No. It's my <laughs> I know. You don't have to tell me. I know exactly where I'm at. There, you can hear it rubbing back there. Yep. Easy. Oh shit. <laughs> We're not doing that. We're not doing that. <laughs> We're not doing that. Alright, so we have found the limit. Of well, buddy. we haven't found it. No, we, we have decided, decided. <laughs> wisely. It doesn't matter what what you drive, it doesn't matter where you drive it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You just gotta know what, what your vehicle is able to do, you know? Yep. Buddy's never gonna be a rock crawler, and that's fine. That's not right. necessarily what I like. Because this kind of stuff is so much fun because you're out in nature, right? It's a beautiful yep. day, the top is down. And stock vehicles are really much more capable than people think. You put a right. good pair of tires on a stock vehicle, you can go a lot of places. It's all about driving the right line. Hey, when in doubt, get out, folks. Yep. When in doubt, get out. Ain't no shame. Ain't no shame. Um, no. <laughs> so y'all know that uh, 2020 was a big shit show of a year, right? And my, normally my job requires a lot of traveling and I wasn't traveling and I was really bored and I always wanted a lifted Miata, um, but I wanted to kind of do it from scratch, but I didn't have a garage. And I knew it would be really hard to like be a shade tree mechanic and lift a Miata. Like it's just, that's not super feasible. So I was following uh, some lifted Miata people on Instagram and this I'm gonna go buddy get came back up and for buddy. sale and I, I DM'd him and I'm like, I'm giving you a thousand dollars right now. Don't you dare sell buddy to anybody else. And uh, now he's mine. But yeah, like one of the, the tenets of off-roading is drive what you can see. Yeah. So a lot of times that means, that's why we got out and, and scouted that, right? Cause like, yep. I didn't know what was gonna be up there. And you don't wanna get yourself into a situation where you can't turn around. Right, it's not just stopping before the hard part. It's knowing that you're gonna be in a spot where you can turn around. Right, yeah. right. I mean, if, that, if we hadn't had that, if we hadn't had that little turnaround right there where uh, where she turned around, that yep. would have been a big problem for the for, for the Land Cruiser. Now, now, one of the things that's happening here on this trail as we drive along is Buddy outpaces the Land Cruiser right, right. away. Because oh, yeah. Buddy is low to the ground, great center of gravity, 
and these are roads that Buddy can do. Land Cruiser comes, so we stop about every two minutes, yeah. right? Wait for the Land Cruiser. Okay. Mike, you're gonna wanna drive with your thumbs on the outside of the steering wheel. <laughs> Right, Nobody, this. you can tell people that, but until they're until they crawling almost, and their steering wheel spins. Yep, until they almost break their yeah. thumb. No, that's not. Oh right. no, we're gonna cross. Oh yeah, no, we're not doing. We're not doing that. <laughs> Emmy, that's not right. Get your head in the back. <laughs> oh my God, we'd be so. <laughs> that was. That was super awesome. Isn't it fun? Yeah, that was really, really He's cool. He's super fun. It's amazing what you can do yeah. with just like a lift and some tires. You're able to cover a lot more ground uh -huh. um, because you're just more nimble. You know, right. the, there's, there are trade-offs, obviously. It's tough to go out for two weeks at a time with something like this, but for day trips, on, yep. it's the perfect little guy, and perfect little thing. Fun as hell. Right? Um, what else should we know about the vehicle? Anything on the inside that you've that you've done for so, racing or anything else we should know about it? So on the inside, um, the biggest thing is I just put in a, a radio, which is not a GMRS or a ham. It's uh -huh. a, a VHF um, frequency, so not a CB, it's a business band radio, which is what we use in racing. Right. Um, I didn't really even know there was like GMRS or ham for your car. And then I was like, well, how come I'm not, how come we're not getting each other? It's like, oh, it's right. a different frequency. Right. Um, but that's what we all use. So it's yep. got it all programmed in with all of our regular um, frequencies that I use with all of my friends. So it, it works for me, but that was just installed. Um, I, that's it. Cup holders because Mazda cup holders Absolutely are garbage. Absolutely critical, right? Garbage cup holders. Right, custom cup holders. Yeah. Um, but I would like to, uh, I, at one point, I need to do a Gambler 500 Hoop DX, which mm -hmm. if you don't know about the Gambler 500, it's basically all vehicles like this, except like even shittier, right? right. Like, I mean, like Toyota Corolla, <laughs> lifted Toyota Corollas. It is the ultimate wrong what you brung. And most of the time they go out and they do um, cleanups, yep. but they also have a Hoop DX series, which is like a rally cross series that people can go to. So uh, I would like to do that in this, but uh, for me, safety-wise, I really want to have five-point harnesses, and this still has the stock three-point harnesses. Right. So I would like to get those in, um, and it would be nice to have a full cage. But then that's start you're starting to get into a lot of money there. So right. I think five-point harnesses would be a good, the next good like safety upgrade. Right. So is that that's your next favorite upgrade? Is the five-point harness anything else? Uh, the winch needs to go in, and those lights need to happen. Oh, and he's also got a battery, a super secret battery disconnect for um, anti-theft. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Oh, that was Another, a manual. No one's going right. to steal it, right? Like, <laughs> we were joking it's earlier. Like it's like, people it's at a it manual. Go, it's oh, like, I don't, I don't know how to drive that. <laughs> you don't need those uh, steering wheel locks anymore because no. nobody knows how to drive a manual transmission. Yeah, so You're I, safe. I feel fine. You're fine. <laughs> what else should we know, Emmy? Uh, let's see. So uh, you can find me reviewing cars on uh, theroadshow.com. Your articles are awesome over yes, there. Yes, thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Um, I was just in a video about the Rebel Rally and the Rivian R1T electric vehicle. So that's yep. up on Rivian's channel and it's really good. Cool. Just really shows the truck in a great light. So I was really stoked to be able to drive an electric truck for seven days off road. Like that was. That is awesome. Oh, amazing. What, what about uh, any uh, upcoming plans for races can people check to see if you're yeah, going to be in any, yeah well any, you know anything? like there, there's this thing called the the coronavirus uh -huh. i don't know if you've heard about it no yeah and uh it's kind of pushing racing back a little bit so yeah. uh my <laughs> next race was supposed to be down in in san felipe and then that got pushed back right. until uh may now so we'll see well we'll, we'll see follow along we'll make sure that we, we yeah know. for sure perhaps I'm, another video in the yeah, future i'm yeah emmy on instagram so yeah. awesome me there Emmy, thanks for spending the time. Oh, dude, we really, really so appreciate you sharing Yay. the vehicle with us. Doesn't matter what you drive. Doesn't matters matter what where you drive. drive it. Exactly. Get out there, you guys. Go ahead. If you guys, hey, we got more videos like this. Check them out. Till next time, Outfit Explorer. See you later. <laughs>